Hello and welcome to my talk, how to win an argument with a maintainer. Now about me, my name is David Edmondson. I've been a KDE hacker for over 10 years. I currently work for Blue Systems and I'm a maintainer for a lot of projects and I spend a lot of time committing patches to other parts of KDE and even other projects. So why am I giving this talk? Well, somebody asked me at the end of uh, QTS this very question, and I spent the next 10 months thinking, thinking about this and trying to come up with some useful tidbits that might help other people. So what do we want to avoid? Everyone probably knows that situation where someone's pushing for something, a maintainer's pushing back, you're not really going anywhere. Your arguments just go on and on and they will drain a lot of energy. I know somebody in KDE who bragged about their ability to just keep pushing and pushing until your maintainer backed down, but that's not really winning an argument, that's just being better at bullying. So this is a situation we want to avoid, and there are several steps and patterns that I've seen other people do, and things that I know I want to receive as a maintainer, which can help avoid ever getting in this situation. So your winning move is to try and avoid that headbutting situation because once you're in this massive argument it's very hard to get out of. So what are some steps that we can do to approach this in a way that ends up being better for everybody? And one of the most important opening steps is to make sure you focus on a problem not a individual specific solution. And this is for multiple reasons. Firstly, as a maintainer if I see a patch or somebody wanting to change something in a bug report, the first question I'm going to be asking is why, what problem is it trying to ultimately solve? Because that's the main job as a maintainer. And if you approach explaining a why, the why aspect, it reduces a layer of communication difficulty that you're going to have to get through anyway. Also, if you're coming to try and change a project, it's a lot easier to try and convince a maintainer that a problem exists and we need to find a solution than to try and to convince him both at the same time a problem exists and that this is a specific solution that solves it. It reduces your problem in half when you're approaching a project. Another thing I found is that if you can convince somebody to reach a conclusion themselves, everyone's a lot happier for it. And this is something we used to see a lot with the old VDG, old UX group with Thomas Fife and Co, is they wouldn't push for a change, it would just keep asking questions until you reached that same conclusion that they were possibly hinting at. And that makes everyone a lot happy. You're not telling somebody what to do, you're setting up a problem and helping them maybe find that same solution. But it also sets a tone for compromise. If you come in saying this is the one solution and I'm not willing to talk about others and discuss others, and it doesn't show that you're willing to compromise. And if you expect a maintainer to change their position, it's important that you also come across as being willing to change your position as well and reach some kind of compromise. Last but not least, if you come explaining what the real problem is, what the end goal that we're trying to solve, if you work together, brainstorming every possible solution, looking at different avenues, and the maintainer typically has a lot more experience in knowledge of what's available and what, what the problems are, what we, what's been tried before, you might find you actually re re reach a better solution than the initial one that you had, and you came proposing. Another common mistake that I've seen um, happen at the beginning of conversations is a lot of focus on why a specific decision five years ago, 10 years ago, was wrong. And this is a complete waste of energy. If you try and argue why something was wrong, people are naturally going to defend it. They're going to explain why they made that specific decision and suddenly you're in an argument. And the one thing you want to do is not try and phrase your argument as, a winner and a loser, but as compromise. And ultimately, unless you have a time machine, it doesn't really matter. You can't go back and change that decision. And if you do have a time machine, there's probably better things you should be doing. 
So instead, the best thing to focus on is why should a decision that's been made five years ago be revisited? And this really helps if you can point to one or more specific changes that should re-trigger a discussion again. This could be an external technology that didn't exist when a previous decision was made. It could be a general trend of user um, of things in the field. Something specific that you can point to and say, well, now this thing has happened, therefore we should revisit this. Moving on from some of the initial problems, it's something you can do when you start to see tension in an argument. And this can have, this applies really well just on code reviews, as well as Bugzilla and in real life in general. And one thing that I've seen to work and I try and do myself is to prove that you're on the same page. So one thing I like to do when you see it as a starting to get some tensions at the start of an argument is to rephrase the other person's counter argument in your own words. So something like, so what you're saying is blah, 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 blah. Ideally in a really concise way, because generally if somebody writes paragraphs and paragraphs, they don't really understand anything. If someone can, if someone can explain a complicated problem very simply, they're normally a smart person. It takes a smart person to do that. So this is important because you resolve misunderstandings very early. One thing I've seen is if you go into an argument and you misunderstood a technical, a very small technical thing at the beginning of a discussion, you can waste lots of hours, waste a lot, um, create a big argument, and you're never going to get anywhere if you're not on the same page to begin with. It also proves to the other person that you're listening. People don't like to not be listened to. So if you prove that you've read your arguments, you've understood their arguments, but you still disagree, it changes the scope of the conversation completely. Suddenly you're a smart person who happens to disagree, not just a general pleb. But also it concentrates the discussion into more precise concrete points. Sometimes people ramble for ages and ages and ages without really saying anything useful. And if you can distill that into a couple of key sentences of, oh, this is the problem, this is what we need to fix, that can have a really big impact on the rest of the conversation. And I've learned from my Googling, this is called tactical empathy. And, if you, and there's lots of resources about that on why it's generally a good thing. So somebody told me, we're not in code reviews, I always typically respond with questions rather than statements. And this is because I'm trying to understand the situation and that really helps. It's not creating a conflict, it's asking a question which is helping them resolve it. Another suggestion that really helps is having some sort of big overall picture of what you're trying to change. If somebody comes to me with a patch for my project that turns the background purple, I'm going to reject it saying, this is just random, I don't know what you're doing. But if someone comes to me saying, well, I have this task, I've got this overall idea of changing a palette, this is the way I'm going to do it, that's a lot easier to accept. It seems that somebody has this overall goal, I can understand what their end goal is, it's a lot easier to accept. The counter argument to this is if you're submitting a patch for another project, is to make sure you do it in small incremental chunks. Don't do this massive world refactoring change all at once because that's going to be makes life a lot harder for you. If you can break it down into this is my end goal, here's my first chunk to get us there, that's generally well received. Another thing to make you, um, really helps is to make the most of meetings, be it virtual, be it just an IRC, and make use of other people as well as actual conversations. Things on Fabricator can get really convoluted really quickly. If you bring in other people, if you get into a real chat, these can help. So I don't know how this works here, but if there's any questions, 
just ping me, I guess.